Hey everyone, uh, so, bad hair day. Uh, but today there was an article in the Sydney Morning Herald um, about a study that was conducted at my university uh, about mobile phone usage in Australia. And the study basically indicates that people feel that they're getting and they're getting screwed by their mobile phone providers. Now to just quote some of the things, I'll link the Sydney Morning Herald article. Um, so half of Australian mobile um, phone users are getting hit by bill shock, which is when they get a bill that's uh, larger than they expect. The median overspend per bill is 40 Australian dollars, which to you Yanks is roughly 40 US dollars, um, so per month. Um, and only a third of customers uh, find that they're using all of the different options they have on their plan. So if they're getting SMSs and calls and data usage, only a third of them uh, feel like they're actually using up all of the things that they can use up. Um, furthermore, uh, consumers in Australia find it harder to compare mobile carrier offers. They have little trust in the industry to respect their rights. They find it harder to switch suppliers and consumers don't think that mobile carriers behave ethically. Um, and all of this to me, it's just one example and it's just that this thing hit the newspaper today so I'm going to talk about it. But there's other examples, probably better examples than this of this as well. It goes back to when I made that video, how I don't like advertising. And I was talking about how um, people get suckered in by advertising and they make decisions that they shouldn't be making. Uh, and then people responded, you know, well, that's those people's fault. They're idiots. But any idiot, any idiot that's slightly less idiotic can actually just go Google everything and figure everything out and everything's great. So that's not really a problem for the free market. Um, and I said back then, that's bullshit. And I stand by it. It's bullshit. And this is one tiny bit of the proof that we have, the enormous body of evidence that in fact it's bullshit and people make bad choices all of the time. Uh, in Australia, we have this huge diversity of options when it comes to mobile phone carriers. Yeah, we have lots and lots of options. Um, theoretically, according to the uh, conventional wisdom, that should mean that people should be getting great deals because you can have so much choice and you can pick this or that and it's incredible. Um, in fact, it's horrible. Why? Well, because all of this choice confuses consumers and mobile phone companies use this choice together with the fact that they understand that consumers don't understand the products to sell them products that the consumers are going to underutilize so they can make money off them, right? Uh, and then you end up with consumers who are paying way too much for things they're not even using. And so the plan might look really good on paper if you use all of these things uh, and you fell within all of these limits, but almost no one does. And if you were the world's savviest consumer, you might actually do well out of this whole thing. But almost no one is. For one thing, most people don't have kind of the, um, the predictive ability plus the mathematical skills to precisely calculate <laughs> their monthly usage of these different services, uh, especially like whatever, two years in advance, how long these contracts often go. Um, so they wind up not being able to make a correct decision. They guess, they use heuristics, and those heuristics are very fallible. They can easily be tricked by something that sounds really good, but in fact, in reality, it sucks because that thing that they just paid a lot of money for, they didn't end up using. And of course, the mobile phone carriers, they invest lots of money into people figuring out what these things are, how they can make these people buy stuff they don't need and that they're underutilizing so that they can get free money. And what you wind up with is people, consumers, not getting the product they want. Um, and that's like that in every area that actually 
where there's actually any complexity to the product. So no, if you're buying nails, the free market works perfectly because when it comes to nails, um, you know, brand A nail, brand B nail, they're probably pretty much the same and you can try hammering one into a plank of wood and you're fine. But when it comes to anything that's more complex, that has more facets that you need to analyze, uh, and these facets change over time because obviously like the phone mobile phone industry doesn't stay still so the technology changes the plans change everything changes and the same goes for the computer you buy the same goes for every for so many uh, things that you consume then you can't keep up with that and you make poor choices and this information component is of course a vital one to how a free market supposed to work. All of the participants are supposed to have perfect information. That's one of the underlying assumptions. Now, that sometimes gets kind of relaxed into, well, they should only have pretty good information and make pretty good decisions. But in fact, they often have terrible information and they end up making horrible decisions. And there's a complete distortion and everything goes very badly wrong. Um, and so, you know, even if you go to, say, a review site, a lot of these review sites are run by companies that basically take money from the people that they're reviewing directly and then <laughs> just uh, only include certain whatever plans from people that are paying them or evaluate them in a way that makes one look better than the other one. And even, uh, let's say, CNET. You know, if you want to buy a computer product, you want to buy, oh, you're thinking, should I get an iPad or an Android device? What's CNET? CNET is probably not getting paid by Apple directly, but it's kind of like with politicians. They want access. They want Apple to talk to them and they want to have a good relationship with the big players because those are the most interesting players, the people that already have huge market share. So what's going to happen? Well, the same thing that goes on when uh, the media reports about a candidate or any issue, really. If it involves someone powerful, they're going to suck up to them because they understand that that's going to buy them access. And in this model where access means that they can produce more interesting information, um, they, they'll get the inside scoop on some new product, for example, just like... Uh, uh, a news channel might get an interview from a big candidate then that means more profit for them so what you have is money corrupting the flow of information not just in politics which is probably the worst area where it corrupts um, but also in every other aspect of the market uh, and so you have this whole idea breaking down because supposedly with information perfect all of these things will balance out um, and there's a whole other issue to whether they would, according to, uh, because the mathematics really aren't quite as simple as neoclassical economics makes it out to be. Um, but even if that were all a given, it still wouldn't work because the information asymmetry is so big and because this information is being intentionally corrupted for the benefit of the companies trying to sell you this stuff. Um, so if you want to have a market, what's the solution? regulation regulation that's right regulation to actually make sure that people offer like a company a corporation offers a product which is honest and not trying to fool the consumer you know guidelines stuff like that and regulation to form independent or semi-independent bodies which actually evaluate this kind of stuff um, so instead of having to rely on something that's sponsored by the industry to re review something for you, um, through regulation and law, you might actually get uh, an organization which is by law required to provide you with a more or less impartial, um, impartial review of something. And that may actually get to provide you a bit of an idea of what that product is actually worth rather than basically just corporate propaganda um, so that's really all I wanted to say in this video I don't think that 
we can just leave stuff up to the free market because people make bad choices all the time but they make bad choices because they get bad information but they get bad information because corporations invest huge amounts of money into making sure that the information is bad because they understand that that's a much more efficient way of maximizing their profits than to actually uh, maximize the utility of their products.